Good morning, folks. We've got major news stories to cover today and an even bigger one coming later tonight. Before that, however, notice the one little bright spot incoming south of the equator from the left. Let's come to spaceweathernews.com and check out the last 24 hours on our star because bright umbral fields aren't something we've seen in a little while. Dark coronal holes up north, but trailing them, the thin dark line of a plasma filament we've watched for three days enters Earth-facing eruption position today. You can see it again here in 171 angstroms. Meanwhile, the umbral field brightness south of that is indeed a little active region, not producing solar flares as three baby umbra are just taking their first breaths this morning, but eyes on them today as they do contain the only relevant surface magnetism on the entire Earth-facing disk of our star. Solar wind here, speed rising in just the last four hours, and while it should go a bit higher, its late onset diminishes the chance of even slight geomagnetic instability. It's likely to peak out at KP4 or 5 only. There will be another opportunity for increased solar wind speed this weekend from these coronal holes. You might remember from yesterday, however, it could miss due to its northern position unable to affect Earth. Top quake of the last day struck northern Afghanistan. Luckily, it was 190 kilometers deep because the feel of the shake across six Middle Eastern and Southwestern Asian nations would have been deadly if it was at the surface. This brings us to our articles, and we'll begin with earthquakes. A significant pattern is traced over 5,000 years, suggesting that south-central Chile takes a nine-pointer every 200 years, not unlike the New Madrid cycle, and eight-pointers every few decades. They also say the next uptick phase may be starting soon. We're zooming in here on the Large Magellanic Cloud, and it is one of the sister systems to our Milky Way, living right next door, home to the first ever extragalactic gamma ray pulsar, and now, this supposedly low metallicity mass is baffling scientists by containing large amounts of complex organic chemistry, the kind thought to be impossible given the lack of heavier elements in the region. Life pieces are everywhere. Up next, one of the things with which electrical proponents like me take issue is the mass in black hole winds. This article is seeming to suggest that they are forming in the outflowing wind, not unlike what we believe happens in the solar wind at the solar system scale, and they say water is one of the molecules preferentially produced. A tremendous article out about the jet stream and its effect on European weather. By the way, combined with recent literature, it does appear that the jet stream North Atlantic Oscillation and the Polar Vortex are predominantly powerful over European climate, and those are three of the most affected climate parameters in terms of space weather, and all are set to bring colder patterns as the sun heads into grand minimum this century. A little later today, we'll have a video release on this, and how this man, who looks suspiciously like August Dunning, has rediscovered a long-forgotten truth of which you were all recently apprised right here on the channel. It changes everything. See you in a few hours. Folks, today is the last day to register for Observing the Frontier 2018. Last chance, and I'll shake your hand when we meet in the desert. We've got your world of wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.